Welcome to Goonies World. My name is Goonie, also known as Colin, and I am joined by Meanie, also known as Ryan. Hello, everybody. And I'm also joined by Johnny Farrell, also known as Sean. Hey, 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 everybody. And I'm also joined by Lunicorn, also known as Lynn. Hello. And it's my turn to GM again, and... A rare treat, a rare treat. Yeah, Yay. it's going to almost never runs games, yeah. This is like Eventually, your third or fourth game it. ever of all time that you've ever run. It's like third or fourth, right? Fourth? Probably fourth, uh, yeah. yeah. Eventually we'll lose track, which will be a good thing. Um, but today we're going to play a game, and I'm not even sure if... It stands, if you're supposed to say foo or fu, uh, but I'm going to go with foo, because I think that will actually fit with what I have planned. Um, That's the system. It does stand for Freeform Universal uh, by Nathan Russell, and it is a universal system that you can use with any setting, and it's very rules light and you just want to beat the odds which means you want to roll a d6 and roll a even number to succeed and then there's kind of levels of success so if you roll like a six on a d6 uh, you succeed but you might get a little something extra like a little bonus Um, and then if you roll a two, you still succeed, but there might be like a slight hiccup. It just depends on whatever situation we're in. But that's the the system, and the setting will be Nevada in the 1980s. And this will take place in our Jupiter Springs universe. Um, and the only thing you need to know about the... Super Springs universe is that it's a lot like our own universe or world, uh, except for there's some you know additional like fictional people and places, and some some weird stuff happens sometimes. Um, but we're gonna actually start in a religious compound uh, called Musterton. And uh, inside Musterton, you'll find Musterites, and Musterites uh, practice Musterism, which is an offshoot of Mormonism. I think we've uh, previously said that it's a kind of a fringe sect. Uh, They kind of split off from Mormonism a long time ago in the 1800s and have been going their separate ways uh, for a long time and kind of evolved into something pretty different. Um, They do share some, you know, beliefs along with just Christianity as well. Um, But they definitely are their own thing by now. They were sort of... uh, can't remember the word uh, disavowed by the Church of Mormon Um, but uh, they are definitely not technically Mormons they are Musterites and uh, they their leader is uh, someone called Jacob uh, Jacob Muster Heller and 
he was a contemporary of Joseph Smith, and he kind of saw himself as a prophet as well, and he sort of, um, you know, amassed his own followers, and then the rest is history. There are probably other, I mean, I know there's definitely other Musterites besides here in Musterton, just different uh, communities of Musterites living here and there, probably outside of Nevada as well. But um, now let's go inside the eight-foot walled compound of Musterton, and inside uh, we'll find, you know, there is a lot of farmland there a lot of crops are being grown and there's livestock there's you know barns there's a big church and um, there's houses Uh, quite a few people live there and uh, there's kind of right now there's a I see there being a some changes happening because there's a there's a little bit of divisiveness over technology you've got older people that are more reluctant uh, to embrace technology and then you've got younger people that are much more willing but not not everyone you know it depends on how they personally feel about it but um your leader of Musterton because you are Musterites and you live here and the leader his name is uh, Bishop Matthias Miller and um, the bishop in this case you know is not like a Catholic bishop it's more like a pastor he's sort of the uh, high priest and um, kind of the uh the mayor as well, although this isn't technically a a town, but um, he's sort of younger and um, kind of seen as as somewhat hip, and he's probably like in his early 40s, and he has embraced technology, and he has like a, he does like a weekly sermon, like a broadcast over the radio, and um, from his the church steeple is where he's got that set up but he right now like everyone is gathered in what I'll call the town square area Um, there's a stage set up and uh, there's a you know like a little canopy over that stage and and you see Bishop uh, Matthias there um, with a microphone Um, but before we get to that I I also wanted to say that next like this compound is the only other things around it are there's an infamous prison several miles away called Hardgate and we have had a series of uh, take place there but um, yeah called a hard time at hard gate but that's not a prereq- prerequisite for this series although this does take place sometime after that happened after those incidents happened um, and then that the Musterton and uh, hard gate are kind of surrounded by this area called the Wilderness. And um, that's the actual name of it. It's just a lot of, like, it's kind of badland terrain. And uh, there's a lot of canyons and buttes. And um, there's also some pine tree forests. And then the only town nearby is called West Wells which is uh, pretty small. 
the only thing of note there is a casino, which is also pretty small, but surprisingly popular. But that's what's nearby. Inside, everyone's gathered around, and yourselves included. Uh, normally, everyone wears like the plain dress style that you might see the Amish wearing. Um, although today is a little different because it's churning day and uh, it happens it's a special day that happens once a year and um, everyone is wearing yourselves included unless you say otherwise uh, you're all wearing tinfoil hats um, but that's just for today <laughs> uh, and I'll get to, to why in a second but I wanted to let you guys introduce your characters and I'm going to start with the order that the characters were created and so I'm going to start with Sean yes hello uh, my name is Yeshua Dandy I'm uh, the oldest of 12 children I'm 22 years old tall I'm 6'5 I'm thick set got a bit of a belly but I'm I'm generally fit and I've got red hair I wear a full beard uh I'm strong in my body, empathetic in my mind, I'm quite perceptive, and I'm a little naive. I think the best of people often, even when they don't deserve it. I am a deacon in the church, but that's not as fancy as it sounds. I've been a deacon since I was 12. That means I mostly do upkeep on church property, and uh, I do congregant care, giving old people rides to the doctor and visiting shut-ins and so on and so forth. I, I lost my father when I was young, and I'd, I'd like to attend Brigham Young University, but we won't get into all my backstory right now. I'm uh, unattached at the moment. I always have my eye out for a, a good muster eye woman to be my good lady wife someday. And of lots and lots of children. And uh, that's me, Yeshua Dandy. It's a pleasure to meet all of you. Okay. Uh, and then, Ryan, who is your character? Um, well, uh, um... <clears throat> My name is Moroni Young Smith. Um, I'm descended both from, uh, theoretically, um, Joseph Smith and Brigham Young, um, through a rather precarious, uh, cir circuitous uh, route. But he's um, he's like five ten, five eleven, um, dark hair, but he always wears it covered up with a headscarf, um, full beard, um, thin well muscled um from working in the fields and um he's uh from an even smaller former sect um of musterism called uh, the celestines uh who are even sort of i mean musterites kind of lean a little bit into the like plain dressed Amish style dress and, and, and some kind of shy away from, from technology and ostentation and, and whatnot. But the Celestines, when they were still a thing, they got reabsorbed back into Musterism eventually for reasons I won't go into detail about. But basically, um, you know, they were even more sort of conservative and plain dressed and shunning of technology and in fact he is so shunning of technology and ostentation there's just like you know, no buttons no uh nothing like that um and he you know he 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 only his only means of transportation is his horse uh and the only uh weapon that he would use would be like a sword or a, a typically he he has a um you know, a musket or a black powder rifle, because um, you know he kind of thinks anything mo more modern than that is just too too modern. Um, and because of that, I think he also would very likely not be wearing a tinfoil hat. Um, and he he would be coming to this event at the at the at the town square on on horseback, um, unless it's close enough to just walk uh, from from his modest homestead that he built himself by hand. Um, but, to, you know, like tinfoil slash aluminum foil, whatever, that, that's just far too modern of, a, of an invention for him to embrace. And in fact, he 
looks at disdain, looks with disdain at sort of the PA system and everything because he he thinks that you know he, the, the, the bishop shouldn't even be talking into a microphone and using electricity and stuff, and he's just kind of shaking his head and rolling his eyes at it. So I take it you're not a regular listener to Bishop Miller's radio sermon. I've never heard it once. Well, it's good to stick to your principles. I admire that. I myself do enjoy a little technology. I, I like to watch my stories in the evening on the television. But uh... Yeah, and when I say tin foil, I do mean actual tin and not aluminum because uh, tin, they actually had tin foil way back in the late 1800s. And, you know, we still say tin even though it's aluminum now. But, uh, yeah, and let's hear from Lynn. Who is your character? Um, my character is Cecily Young May. I am one of Moroni's cousins. Though, um, I don't shun technology as much as he does. Um, I, I, I do listen to the sermons. Um, I would describe myself as, um agile of body, focused of mind, um, ap- acrobatic, and um, sometimes I'm a little bit reckless, um, not in the traditional sense of what most people would think of as a reckless young girl, but um, like I really love horses, and I love the outdoors, and I do some trick riding and, and that kind of thing. I have a really cool horse. Um, his name's Black Lightning, and I do my trick riding a lot on him. Um, but, you know, when I see him reckless, sometimes I get myself into situations that might not be, um, particularly safe, but that's because I know that God will protect me. Um, I have unwavering faith, but maybe not quite as conservative as my cousin Moroni, um, um, I really, I'm, I, I, I want everything in the world, like, I'm only 17, and there's so much to experience, and, and I, I want to, I want to go to college someday, and I want to go on missions, and I want to get married, and I want to have lots of children. Um, I also think it would be really cool to be a famous trick rider, because there's not very many of those. It's pretty cool. But, you know, I mean, pressure from my family, maybe some of these things are out of reach, but, you know, maybe if I could just get a little bit of adventure in my life, that would... But, but yeah, I, I want everything and am kind of unfocused in that sense. Um, don't tell anybody this, but um, there's a deacon at the church. His name's Yeshua. He's really cute. I, he's in. Oh, know, my. Yeah, he's, he's really cute. Well, I don't know about um, cute. So, I guess. Um, Oh, okay, so physical description, um, she has, I have brown shoulder length hair, uh, blue eyes, very traditional in dress, blue, you know, the, with the layers and the collared shirt underneath the dress, and, uh, but I do wear very loose skirts that don't interfere with riding. I always carry Um, My trusty walking stick, which um, also uh, I use as a balancing pole when I'm doing my trick riding. And I guess that's it about me. I'm 17. I'm getting ready to turn 18. And yeah, I I think that's about all. Okay, and are you and Yeshua wearing the tinfoil hats? Oh, yes, yes I, I prefer not to buck with tradition here, you know. It's, uh, yeah. I do it for the comfort of others more than, you know. Well, and with the clarification that uh, it is actual tinfoil and not aluminum foil, and if it was available, 
uh, in the <laughs> late 1800s, he would he would be wearing. Okay. Since it's tin and not aluminum, yeah. then Moroni will join us. It's got to be mm. actual tin. Um, yeah, that's probably good. Um, but so yeah, you guys are gathered here, and um, Bishop Matthias. He's up on the stage, you know, with this microphone. Um, it's hooked up to the PA system. And uh, and he says, Hello, brothers and sisters. What a glorious churning day this has turned out to be so far. But before we get to the churning competition and other festivities, I'd like to read from the Book of Muster. And he opens it up and says, To everything, churn, churn, churn. <laughs> <laughs> There is a season, churn, 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 and a time to every purpose under heaven. Amen. And so we honor the time when Jacob Heller found himself without a proper churning staff and was thus unable to make butter for his family, when lo and behold, the angel Xerxes appeared before him and gave it unto him his own churning staff, and Jacob was allowed to keep this churning staff which was superior to all other churning staffs created by man. But the angel warned Jacob that all who shall use the churning staff, as well as others in the immediate vicinity, must wear hats of tin. Amen. Amen. Now let the churning Amen. contestants take their place on stage. And yeah, everyone uh, claps, and uh, you see uh, contestants that are part of this... Uh, Turning competition, uh, they they walk up on stage. You know they're carrying that the old like pioneer style uh, churns with the sticks, or they you know call them churning staffs. Um, and um, and then you see one contestant. Uh, you know him as a cool Caleb Fisher. He's a teen, um, but he's kind of a rebel teen. He's kind of uh, hamming it up, and he walks on stage and um, he's carrying this uh, boom box or ghetto blaster as it might be called in the 80s uh, Mm -hmm. on his shoulder and it's playing the song you might you people might not have know who it's by but it's that song Disco Inferno by the Tramps by the Tramps Uh, yes Disco Inferno. But he's singing the lyrics differently. He's saying, Churn, baby, churn. Disco and churn. Oh. <laughs> and, uh, Clever. Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. And the, you see this other girl in the crowd that you know. Very cute girl. Um, and she says, uh, her name is Rebecca. And she's like, Oh, that cool Caleb Fisher is so cool. And um, and then uh, you see this other guy. You know his name is Elder Abraham Schwartz, an older guy. He's more of a traditionalist, and he's shouting like, "Turn off that infernal doom box this instant! You will be. You should be ashamed of yourself, brother Caleb." But uh, everyone just ignores him, and uh, and they um, turning competition begins and everyone's having a good time it's probably you know it's a sunny day it's probably like noonish or so um and i don't know if you guys uh wanted to do any uh role playing now um i i imagine you guys know know each other it's not that oh, big yes. of a place and probably just about everybody else too yeah. I would suspect yeah well, so who who made a comment about the guy being really cool uh, this oh, that woman Rebecca yes Rebecca sister Rebecca very uh, w- well Moroni not understanding the the slang <laughs> reference would have said something like uh, sister Rebecca is there something wrong with this young man's body temperature regulation? <laughs> no. He's cool. Like, you know, he's like cool. Like, he's cool. <laughs> Someone explain to him 
It's our brother. Cousin, it's slang. Yes, sir. Uh, it it, yes. it just it means that he is interesting and possibly cute. Oh, he's so cute. Um, and it can mean some other things too, but mostly just that he's interesting. Yes, basically, mm. just means a desirable person, and you really need to listen to the radio more, or, or uh, you know, come over and watch some stories on the television with me. If you can get some of these references, you know. I hate to see you held back. And you, uh, Elder Abraham, just remember what the doctor said about your heart. Don't get yourself too worked up over the the doom box there. Well, that certainly is a doom box, and I suspect it would be one of these radios of which you speak as well, and the, 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 the sinful and horrible noises coming out from it are making me feel sick to my stomach. I may have to retire to my homestead. Well, well, if you're, you're going to be sick, make sure you use a bucket. Uh, a bucket is far too <laughs> fat. <laughs> yeah, I don't use buckets. I don't believe in buckets. <laughs> no. I, will, I will make a hole in the earth and vomiteth into it. <laughs> <laughs> Vomit forthwith into the hole. Um, but, well, why don't you guys all make, just to get some rolls going, make, roll a d6... See if you guys uh, notice something while the festivities are happening. Oh, six. Yes, I do. And. Okay. Good. I got a two, so I do, but. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I also got a six, so yes, and. Okay. Well, the. Yeah, the sixes. Um, you definitely notice that guy they mentioned earlier, Elder Abraham Schwartz. Oh, yes. Um, he kind of wanders off from the crowd. And since you got sixes, you also hear... Um, you also hear rumbling sounds. They're kind of faint, but just barely audible over the crowd noise. And Like thunder rumbling, or like... No, like an like engines, like a big like like a big farm combine, maybe, but multiple multiple rumblings. But it sounds like it's coming from outside of the compound, and uh, um, Elder Abraham is walking towards the gate Mm. of the compound, which is closed, and the and um, Baroni. You got a two. I th- so you still hear it, I guess. Uh, or you, I mean, not hear it, but you see. You do notice that uh, Elder Abraham is, is walking off. Um, and, uh, <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Uh, <clears throat> maybe you, um, while you're watching him, um, you, you bump into uh, Rebecca accidentally. And um, face right in the cleavage. Oh, <laughs> oh, uh, yeah! Uh, terribly, terribly. Sorry about that, uh, Sister Rebecca. That I was just watching uh, Brother Abraham. Uh, well, you know, walking. What's not cool is you. You are not cool. <laughs> oh, I would certainly hope not. Um, it is quite a lovely, nice, warm day, and I am wearing my. Wool uh, garments. So <laughs> he's very anyway. literal, Sister Rebecca. He's <laughs> he's a literal fellow. Yeah. Anyway, uh, you watch uh, Elder Abraham walk up to the gate. Yeah, I'm a little concerned about the the rumbling. Do you also hear that yeah. rumbling, Sister Cecily? Yeah, I wonder if he's going to. Investigate. I don't know. It could be a well, convoy of uh, delivery trucks headed for Hardgate. I, I know there's a, a rather significant pudding traffic that goes in that direction, but uh, not not a sound I hear why here would, often. No. Yeah, why would Elder Abraham be interested in that? Well, perhaps you could surreptitiously go over to the gate and see if you could peek out. I think I will. Okay, yeah, you're, you're small and you blend with the crowd. I tower over everyone. I... 
I don't want to look. Uh, I want to draw attention to it. Why don't you go take a quick look? Okay. Okay. There's a there's a good girl. I'm a little patronizing. <laughs> I'm a little patronizing. I mean, well. <laughs> um. <clears throat> yeah. If, if you start heading in that direction, um, he actually before you can get too far, he you see him. There's like a like a metal beam that's sort of you know in place for locking the the gates and he kind of just lifts it up and as soon as he does that um, the gates burst open and a swarm of bikers oh no come in uh, you know bikers like more riding motorcycles and they just come in like bats out of hell and they're uh, you see they're wearing you know these black vests and it's they say pale riders west wells chapter oh no <laughs> and <clears throat> i was gonna ask you out of character if they were wearing specific cuts yep yeah, that's just... their cuts um and they are armed heavily armed Ooh. and they're i mean it looks like machine guns and <clears throat> they're yeah they come in they're encircling this crowd by now you know everyone is noticing them and they're sort of like keeping them in place like you know hurting them and uh they're firing the guns in the air people are screaming and uh they're one lady is is knocked over and it looks like she's gonna get run over and I was gonna have somebody try to Pull her out of the way. Oh, I will. I will rush right over and pull her right out of the way. Well, I'm assuming that the um, the gate opening and the sudden roar of, of motorcycle engines followed by gunfire would have seriously spooked my horse, who has probably run off, and I'm probably chasing after him, but I don't know how far I'm going to get before the, uh, the motorcycle gang corrals us. Yeah, uh, because that is what they're actively trying to do right now is uh, keep everyone here together. They're circling around. And, um, yeah, Sean, make a roll to see if you can save this lady. Oh, oh, lady, you've got to get out of there. Hey, I swear, I just rolled another six. That's awesome. Yes, I do. And... Okay, great. Yeah, and you, you pull her out of the way and you see another person that has fallen over and uh, you actually can get that person out of the way as well for yeah uh, everyone out of the way be careful careful now back up here we go there you go yeah so they eventually once they make sure that you know you're all in place here the the motors shut off and you see one of the guys he's a big burly guy that with a beard, and you can figure he's the the leader. And he steps off his bike, and he says, Listen up, Musterton. My name is Butch Kelly, and we are the Pale Riders. There's a lot of our boys rotten in that nearby dungeon they call Hardgate. And until the feds agree to release them, you are all our hostages. And I swear to God, I thought he was going to say, Hey, musterfuckers. <laughs> musterfuckers. <laughs> and uh, at that moment, uh, you see Coolab, cool Caleb Fisher. He, sa- he shouts, You bastards! And he jumps down from the stage and he charges right at Butch. And um, Bishop uh, Matthias shouts, Caleb, no! And then seconds later, Butch riddles Caleb with bullets. Ooh. And Rebecca screams, and uh, when he when she screams, he he grabs her and holds his gun to her head, and he says, "And anyone else want to be a hero? We're not playing around." And uh, if no one else intervenes, he'll say, um, now "Where's the leader of of this little hovel?" And you see. Uh, 
Bishop Matthias, he steps up out of the crowd and he says, Here, I, I am the leader. And Butch says, Good. And I'm told there's uh, there's radio broadcasting equipment and a phone line hooked up here, correct? He says, Yes, in, in the church tower. And that what I mean by the tower is just it's the base of the church steeple. Um, the church is a big white church like you're kind of this the, this town center area is uh, like sort of in the well in the center of the compound and the church is sort of in the back of the center um, and it's yeah big like white rectangle church with a gable roof uh, and a yeah and a um, a little steeple at the front with uh, like a little antenna sticking up out of the spire but uh, yeah Butch says perfect I will open up a line of dialogue with the authorities but if anyone else tries to sneakily communicate with the outside world you're dead if anyone tries to escape you're dead I imagine that negotiations could take a long while Maybe even days. The FBI won't dare risk anything stupid. At least you better hope not. In the meantime, y'all gonna follow your leader into that big old church of yours. And then we're just gonna sit tight. Now go on, preacher. So, the uh, Bishop uh, Miller, Matthias Miller, starts slowly walking towards the church... And uh, people start following him. They're just kind of shuffling along. And the, the Pale Riders, uh, are they start up their engines again. And some of them are kind of following al- along like, you know, cowboys. Like you guys are cows being herded. And uh, some of them go off and start, like, kicking in doors, buildings, just to make sure people aren't in there or hiding in there and um so you i'm assuming you guys will start walking uh with this group um because uh you know it would probably be unwise at this juncture to try anything crazy since they are carrying machine guns and stuff um I'm not going to try anything crazy, but uh, I am going to confront Elder Abraham. Are you a part of this? Okay. Well, you have to... uh, He's in a different uh, part of the crowd. Um, Make... Because I I followed him. Yeah, you did. But he's kind of... You lost track of him because some. Okay. He's a, yeah, he's being. He's definitely being sneaky. Uh, and um, yeah, but you guys, I'm assuming are gonna. I mean, so this would be a good time to explain that. Um, even though it would be crazy to do something heroic right now, you guys aren't totally defenseless because. As you guys know, uh, you have been trained in a obscure martial art that is called Gevora, uh, but it's commonly known as Muster Fu, and it's something that most Musterites are trained in when they're younger, at least, like, as part of their schooling, they just take classes in Gevora, um, and then a lot of times, like, a lot of when, when they're adults, they kind of stop taking it. Just like when you're young, you know, you might take piano lessons or something, but you don't necessarily always keep up with it. Um, but you guys have kept up with <clears throat> Gavora. So you're proficient with it. Um, and it's a defensive martial art. Um, and sort of very um, esoteric... Supposedly, you know, it's goes 
back all the way to like Judea. Um, it's, it's said that even Jesus Christ knew this martial art, um, although he might not have ever used it. Um, but he supposedly knew it, according to Jacob Heller. Um, and Jacob supposedly learned it from the angel Azuziel. Um, but there's not much that will help you right now. Um, but when you guys are walking from your left side, you see a house. It's not too far away. And you see in the doorway, the bikers haven't gotten to this house yet. Um, in the doorway, you see your sensei, uh, elder sensei Uriah King. Yeah, you've trained with him, and uh, he's he's trying to get your attention. Uh, he's like, you know, once you look over there, he's gesturing for you guys to run towards his door to, you know, come inside of his house. And um, so you'll have to make a run for it. Try to not be seen. Quickly dart over there. There are bikers sort of in the back, I kind of see you guys like not in the very rear, but towards the back. But the biker, there's one biker that's definitely like focusing on the back. But if you guys ran off to your left, it would be like in his peripheral vision. So you could do it. And if you want to, I will say that you know, you guys do trust this guy, he is your teacher. Yes. Do you see the sensei? He's getting our attention. We should make a run for it. What do you think? Yes. Okay. Well, brothers and sisters, it does seem risky, but <clears throat> I don't think we have much of a choice. However, I cannot help but to point out that if we did not have these sinful radio transmission devices and, and, and telephones and this horrible technology, this would never have happened. Well, I guess you do have a point. You do make a good you point. You do make a good point. We should bring that up at the next... Uh, at the next assembly, perhaps. But uh, anyway, uh, three, two, one, go! And I'll like hunch yeah. over since I'm so tall and uh, make a dash for it. For brother, for brother, for elder Uriah's house. I assume I had to make a roll. Yeah, you, all three of you all right. make rolls. Come on, even number. Let me use my special green and dice. How, oh. um, how does it work when you have body mind edge something like that that is would be related to helping what do, what do you specifically have so the two things that come to my mind is uh, body is agile and my edge is acrobatics okay yeah I see agile helping and you would roll 2d6 and then you would uh, pick the best result that you get and I also wanted to point out that you have, we you guys each have two foo points. Uh, you can use to re-roll, re-roll, or you can add an extra die to your roll before you roll it. You might need it. This is a pretty dramatic moment. Mm-hmm. I'm gonna make a dash for it. Oh, well, I have a two this time. I only, I succeed, but only just, only just. I barely make it. Okay. I got a six. And I got a four, and so a two. We, we covered the entire spectrum of success. We did. <laughs> Yay. We <are> okay. <clears throat> um, yeah, so... Woo, that was a close one, brother, brother and sister. Cecily gets right over there uh, without anyone... You guys don't even see. She's so quick. Um, <laughs> and uh, Moroni... You know, he succeeds just fine. And Yeshua, um, you make it, but the the biker, he doesn't necessarily see you, but he, it's like he senses that something, you know, happened. Like, he's suspicious of something. He's not sure what he's suspicious of, but he's kind of, now he's kind of looking around. You know, might might investigate, uh, but for now, you guys are good. You've <clears throat> made it into the 
house and um, you see Sensei Uriah he closes the door right away and you're in his little house it's pretty pretty spartan in there and um, he says listen I probably don't have long to explain this to you but I don't trust that those barbarians won't execute all of us especially if the authorities don't give in to their demands Mm -hmm. all my students you three have the greatest potential it is up to you to save Musterton now what I'm about to tell you only the elders know the churning staff of Xerxeal is real it used to be kept here in Musterton but a shunned Musterite that was kicked out that you probably all know or even have heard of is is named uh, his name is Ira Troyer he stole the staff when he was kicked out for his sinful behavior but I have kept tabs on him ever since and I know his whereabouts he lives in West Wells in the Cibola Sunrise apartment complex unit 7 you must find him and get the churning staff only its magic can stop these madmen. And then, now you hear rumbling that's close outside of the door. Oh. And he, and Uriah says, "Hurry!" And he lifts up a rug on the uh, the floor, and it, it, there's a trap door under it. Oh, he says, "I've heard of these. <laughs> this tunnel leads into an abandoned gold mine." You can follow it all the way to the outskirts of West Wells. Take this lantern and Godspeed. Whoever wants to take the lantern can. I shall take the lantern and hold it aloft before us. Uh, Elder, Elder, may God protect you. We will do our best to get the... Thank you, Sensei. Yes, we will. Uh, This is a heavy, heavy burden. I can only hope that I am... I am up to it. I hope I, I measure I believe in you. I believe in all of you. And um, he says, now hurry. And he, this, inside this uh, trap door, you know, there's a little dirt tunnel. You can just hop down into it. And, um, and I'm assuming you do because, mm-hmm. all right. So when you guys do, he quickly, you know, closes it and then puts the rug back, rug back over it. And uh, and actually, if you stay, you know, nearby, you can hear the door, his door being kicked open, and he's like, and he says, "Well, you hear a biker say like, thought I saw someone come in here," and um, but he says, "Well, they went out the back door," and then uh, well, he says, "Come on," and you can assume that he's uh, been taken and. He's going to go up with the others now. And uh, so here you are in this tunnel, and uh, it's just dark, uh, but you can see with the lantern, it's just dirt, and it goes straight horizontally for a while. And um, and then you see uh, that it's, or feel that it, it kind of slopes upward now. And, um, and then actually empties like it comes through the bottom of this bigger mining tunnel just for the through the floor you can climb into this mining tunnel which is uh, you guys were crouching before now you can stand up tall uh, and you can like behind you is where the actual entrance of the mine would be and it's boarded up you're outside you know of the compound now um and you can see there's like old uh mining cart rails on the ground and then the it just uh the the front there you be in front of you is just darkness and you can start walking yes i will hold a lantern aloft before us friends Hopefully we'll find our way out of here and not become hopelessly lost. You know, these old mining tunnels can be very dangerous, too, so 
Be careful where you place your feet. Yeah. Do you- <clears throat> yeah, scary things happen in mine sometimes. Oh, yes. But God will protect us. He sent us on a righteous mission. Do you think this tunnel goes all the way to West Wells? So, that's anyone's guess, Brother Moroni. Or perhaps we'd best take it and see. I only yeah, hope he- there's not many you know, branching passages where we could become hopelessly lost. And watch out for bats. I don't want to get tangled up in your hair, so make sure you put your little bonnet back on there. And, uh, yeah, you guys did. He did say that it was supposed to lead all the way to the outskirts of West Wells, yeah. and it looks like just a straight tunnel. Oh, um, good. The Lord has and, made our way straight, friends. <laughs> yeah, just when you're thinking that, as you're walking. You hear a booming voice, and it sounds like it's kind of coming from everywhere, um, but also maybe nowhere, like maybe in your head or something. This is Can't, Jesus, I, Kent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Stop can, playing with yourself. Stop playing with it. I've got a, there's a speaker in my tooth. Okay, sorry. Yeah, but uh, it says... Heed my words, musterites. Only the worthy may wield the churning staff. Turn back now if you fear the challenges ahead, for difficult they will be. Did you just hear what I've heard, brothers and sisters? I do, and it only strengthens my resolve that the Lord will protect us in this. We will be successful. Yes, but we must not commit the sin of hubris. And, and excessive pride. However, we have been chosen by our master. Lord, uh, w- we will do our best. We will endeavor to rise to the challenge. Uh, my my companion, Brother Moroni, is, 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 is compassionate and, and brave of heart. And dear sister Cecily also is sweet and diligent and very agile. And we will do our best. I, o- I can only hope... That we will do you proud, Lord, for I do completely believe that we have just heard the word of the Lord, friend. And if not the Lord himself, then certainly the archangel who delivered the staff in the first place, perhaps. Yeah, you... He he forgot to say that he's <laughs> his name is the angel Xerxeo. Oh, okay. Let's go, okay, that's Oh, that would make. I would explain it. Yeah, he came back on. He was like, "I, I forgot to say. <laughs> I uh, forgot to say. I'm the angel." <laughs> oh, that's now, all that. Okay. <laughs> now you must go. <clears throat> and um, so yeah, you can uh, continue on, and um, you know, it just keeps going and going, um, and it just keeps going straight, and uh, eventually. You do, you do come to a pit and um, and it crosses the whole area in front of you. You'd have to get over it you'd have, somehow. Um, no. When you... I mean, you have to get up closer to see like how deep it might be. And um, do you want to get closer to it? Well, let's let's get closer. But uh, our friend Cecily is so acrobatic, right? Maybe she could give it a jump. I'm fairly tall. I'm five. I'm six foot five. If I extend my arms out, maybe I could create a bridge with my body if it's not too wide. We'll, well have to get up closer and take a yeah. look. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. We could also possibly use my staff to assist us, depending on how long and deep it is. Yeah. Um, Once you get closer, you see it's about 10 feet long. So it'd be difficult to jump over, but it's still, it's possible. It's just, it'll be hard. And yeah, you think your your staff uh, would give you an extra die. Um, But however, when you look down into the pit you can't believe your eyes 
because yeah. it looks like you're seeing like a hundred feet down, but somehow it's still everything at the bottom is still like really easy to see, and it's like lit up like glowing like as from a fire and but what you see is like hundreds of naked people like living and dead along with like what looks like demons and maggots and snakes and they're all like writhing in blood and guts it's the pit of hell it is the pit of hell friends we have we have found the pit of hell here oh so close oh we have been we've been blessed with many portents both both divine and dark on this day brothers and sisters oh well I hate to jump it. I am going to argue, though, that if I do jump it, I am strong. My body is strong. i got good leg muscles, and I, I feel that I should have an advantage to jump it due to my amazing push I can get with my with my strong, strong, thickly muscled thighs and calves. Yeah, I think that's fair. You probably might want to take a running oh, yes. start at it. Um how high is the ceiling here? Um, it's pretty tall, actually. I'm not sure. Because um, I'm, I'm wondering if... Um, because I already have things inherent to myself that will help me, as does Yeshua. Um, I wonder if I could loan my uh, walking stick... Um, to cousin Moroni, um, so he could kind of use that would give him an extra boost, and he can kind of use it like a pole vault. Yes, yeah. and it's just a normal wooden stick. Just imagining. a normal wooden stick, brother Moroni. So I believe you can use it without compromising your principles. Yes, yes, quite okay, indeed. And uh, I think I will need it, for I do not wish to fall into that horrible pit of. Even. Oh, and you are neither agile nor strong. At least... Should we say a prayer before yes, we go? Yes, let us join hands. Oh. Father in heaven, give us give us the strength and the fortitude to bear what trials come our way. Let us help our brethren. Let us besmirch this evil. Let us be worthy of the churning stick of Xerxeal. In Christ Jesus' name we pray. Amen. <coughs> okay. Amen. Here we go. And I'm going to run for it and jump. And I got two twos. So uh, I, I barely make it again. Probably like grab on with my hands, right? And I have to pull yeah, myself yeah. up. I like look you down between make. my feet and see the <laughs> see the hellscape down below and then pull myself up. Ooh, close one. Thank you, Lord. I got another motherfucking six. Yeah, I got a one and, and a six. So. Oh, okay. Lucky. Good thing Good. you had a yep. stick. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. Um, so, you guys, well, uh, so Cecily, you know, easily makes it, and um, so does Moroni. And Yeshua hanging on to that side of the pit. Once you pull yourself up, you actually um, look behind you now at the pit and now it's just a normal looking pit um it's only like you know three or four feet down it's just dirt um so the hellish scene has vanished once you what got over is it this, friends? perhaps you motivation from the angel yes perhaps it was the angel angelic motivation to help us jump better yes the Lord works in mysterious ways. That much is true, sister. Yes, it's true. But luckily, we are all, we are now on the other side. We must continue our our trek, friends. And it's a good thing I managed to jump with this lantern and I pick it up. <laughs> yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, actually, luckily, you guys. You know the. I'm going to say the the flame still is going in the lantern, but you see something. When you look into that pit now, you see a little, like something white. It's a, you know, kind of stands out. Something small and white at the the bottom of the pit. But you mm. could probably 
re- just reach down and, and grab it if you wanted to. Here, Cecily, reach down and grab that. I'll steady your hand. Uh, d- okay. Why would you put a woman up to such a task, you infidel? Oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> I, I, I have no many. My sisters and mothers are very strong, very hard workers on the farm. I believe in their physical capability, although I... I could be said to be something of a monster for putting her at risk here, I suppose. Once again, you could have a good point, Brother The Moroni. Lord will protect me. I, you're not putting me at risk. You're a deacon and at the church, and therefore you are my superior, and no. I will do as asked. I, I don't feel... I, the, if I am not a superior to anyone. As, you, as it is written, if you would be the, great, the greatest, you must be the least. I am a servant, and uh, but I, will not, I will not let you down. Take my hand and climb down there and get that white thing or see what it is. Okay. All right. So, yeah, you can just reach in and grab it. And it appears to be a, a white book of matches. And um, it's got all the matches in it. So if your lantern goes out, now you'll have a way to light it. Yes. and. On the cover of it, you see some words that don't really make sense. They say, it says, amplify your battle cry. So. I was kind of halfway hoping it would be like a Starfish Arcade. Right. Uh, matchbook. But <laughs> mm-hmm. so, yeah, or uh, Europa I Roadhouse. Such, I wouldn't something. go to such a place. No. I might go to the Ro- Europa Roadhouse. They've got some good chicken wings that I. Occasionally, but that's a long way away in Jupiter Springs, so I don't get much further than West Wells. And, uh, well, uh, amplify your battle cry. Perhaps that's more angelic advice for us. Maybe it will make sense at some later time. I hope so. I hope this is a yes, clue. Yes, perhaps. Or you know, is there anything in our uh, in our food training with? Do we have any like chi type? Uh, I'm, I'm assuming like. Hey! We make noises. Yeah, we, for I, yeah that's chi. called um, ki the ki-ai. Yeah, ki-aiing is like when you make those noises, uh, like ki-ai. like a, just a haya is a ki um, And uh, but yeah, you don't know what this means, and uh, you uh, can continue, and uh, you get a little further, and. Now you see the outline of something like the silhouette of something with a long neck and you hear <laughs> and uh, I think that's a perfect place to end this session. Yes, oh my. Well, that's a little frightening yeah. not exactly the kind of thing you want to hear in a mine underground no. no no it is the leviathan in the darkness all right well i'm intrigued well as am yeah, i as am i yeah yeah definitely so uh i just wanted to mention a little bit of kind of i don't know inside baseball that was kind of funny um and I, I don't even know if anybody even really you know noticed but um, Lynn had posted something about uh, she kind of made her character kind of late in the process of kind of the last minute and she said something about churning it out and I, and I, I just I, I, not even thinking about it and certainly not knowing what was going to happen in the game tonight I, I made a comment like joking that uh, Mustrites aren't allowed to churn anything out except butter. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I know as soon as he said that I, that's exactly what I thought of I was like what yeah, uh, I, and then we had the whole churning day thing, and I'm like, "Whoa, whoa that was unexpected!" <laughs> churn, churn, churn. Not expecting to actually be tur- churning <laughs> butter tonight, <laughs> right? But somehow we did. Okay. It's kind of. It's another message from Zerxiel. That's right. That's Thank right. you, Zerxiel. Hey, everybody! If you like our podcast, don't forget to leave us a good rating and/or review on Apple Podcasts. Podchaser, Spotify, or wherever you're able. Subscribe to us on YouTube. Follow us on Twitter at Goonies underscore world and check out our website at GooniesWorldPodcast.com Email us at GooniesWorldPodcast at gmail.com Thank you for listening.